everybody, Jeff, your executive gardener. I hope everybody's having a great summer uh, and doing some great gardening out there. So I'm here in Houston, Texas. Uh, it's just about August 1st, and excuse the noise in the background. We're getting ready to get pummeled by a major thundershower, which is okay here because it's 100 degrees and it'll cool it out. So if you see some things dropping, it's a little bit of rain, but I've never done an episode in the rain, so why not try now? So. Um, this episode is going to be about uh, composting, and I get a lot of questions about uh, composting from my subscribers and visitors around the world, and a lot of people have a lot of interest in composting, so I want to do a three or four part series. I'm not sure how many parts I'm going to do, but uh, I'm going to do it in several series. I'm going to break it down in shorter videos so you can watch it a little bit at a time, and by the end of the third or fourth video, each of you that are watching should have a very clear understanding how easy it is to compost, exactly what to compost, how to do it, the benefits, and you'll be on your way. So, uh, you know, the number one reason people don't compost is because they're intimidated. They think it's too complicated, um, all that type of stuff. By the end of this series, you'll see that it's not complicated. If you follow the basics in this three or four, three or four part series, you'll be off to the races. I'll also show you three or four different methods in which you can compost and benefit your garden and benefit uh, the overall world. So, um, this first episode is going to kind of be an intro into composting. It'll set up the series and I'll also talk about uh, why why you should compost. That's the not, not just what you should compost, but why should you compost. And that's a big question that each of us have to ask each other, okay? So I'm sitting in front of my uh, tumbler compost bin here, and behind me I have two worm compost bins, and I'll show you them a little bit later. So I'm gonna, I have some notes here, excuse me, from uh, looking at them every so often, but I wanna make sure I cover everything. So um, can you imagine a world everyday world if we did not have things that were biodegradable and broke down. So think of all the trees, all the forests, and if leaves didn't break down, and branches didn't break down, and greens didn't break down, what a pile of stuff we'd have over all the thousands and millions of years. We wouldn't be able to walk, walk around. Because of composting, and because of things being biodegradable, uh, composting is a natural process that occurs out in the wild, okay? And each of us can make that process work in our own backyard to benefit our garden. So uh, composting, at its very basics, is the process of breaking down organic material and it decomposing over time, okay? And the great thing about this is that 60% of your house, of the things in your house, are compostable, are able to be composted, okay? And your trash or scraps from your kitchen can become your treasure in benefiting your garden, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. So during the composting process, um, there's a, each piece of organic matter is broken down by a number of things, and here they are. Organisms, bacteria, worms, yeast, fungi, and insects. So those six things are responsible for most of the composting that occurs um, in, in general nature or in your composting bin itself, okay? And we'll get into that in a little bit. But the best way to think about compost is it's not just dirt. It's a living ecosystem of bacteria, positive bacteria, uh, worms, uh, and other nitrogen, uh, carbon, and uh, trace mineral type materials that is living. So when it goes into your garden, it is alive. Every shovel full that you put in, compost is alive. And I want you to remember that, okay? So the two benefits really of composting at its basics are, number one, it enhances your soil fer fertility in the garden, and number two, it improves your overall soil health. When your soil is healthy, you do not attract pests, diseases, and so forth, okay? So the the best way to think about it is when you grow a garden, you're not really growing your plants. You're growing your plants indirectly, but you're really growing your soil. Compost, because of all the things I've mentioned, will help grow your soil. So in order to compost, in addition to the six things that break down the compost that I talk about, you need moisture, warmth, and air. Okay, that's essential. 
for all composting, regardless of the type of composting you're doing. And the degree to which of there is moisture, warmth, and air will determine the speed from which th things uh, decompose and eventually compost. And we're going to talk about uh, which composting method of the four that I'm using are the fastest by adding more moisture, more warmth, and more air to create compost, rich compost for your garden quicker, okay? So the overall question is, why should I compost? Why should I care about composting, okay? Well, all of us want to leave a better world for our kids, I hope, and our grandchildren and the great-grandchildren um, than, than what we had. And by re number one, the number one reason, of course, as I'm mentioning this, is reducing the waste and helping the environment, okay? So the number one reason, obviously, is climate change, okay? So when we take our scraps, our kitchen scraps, our vegetables, and we throw them in a trash can, okay, and it goes into plastic, which doesn't break down in landfills, okay? But when it goes into plastic, um, when you do not have air to break down vegetable scraps and food scraps, it creates methane. Methane's a gas. Uh, that is 20 times more damaging to our environment than carbon dioxide, okay? So if you ever go by a trash fill, and we have several here in Houston, you'll see exhaust pipes sticking up from uh, around the huge mound that is the, the dump. Um, that's to let go of methane gas. And keep in mind, methane gas is 20 times more damaging to our atmosphere and our environment than carbon dioxide. So. By you throwing your banana peels and your fruit into the trash can, into plastic, which takes forever to break down. Now, I know some plastic they make breaks down faster now, but plastic in general is generally not biodegradable. You create methane gas, which released into the environment uh, creates the greenhouse effect and everything that we're experiencing with the melting of the polar ice caps and all that. It's a bad thing. Otherwise, what I'm saying here in this video is take your kitchen scraps and compost them. Or take your newspaper, compost it. Your paper towel, uh, empty rolls, compost them. And we'll talk about the things you can compost later, okay? So that's number one. Why should I compost? Is to reduce waste and help the environment. Number two is uh, of, 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 of uh, improving the environment is reducing the carbon footprint. So number one, um, by you using, by you composting, and using it in your garden, you can grow your own fruits and vegetables. You, not, you do not have to rely on trucks shipping tomatoes and watermelon a thousand miles to get to you, which creates carbon dioxide. So you reduce the carbon footprint, uh, your impact on the carbon footprint in the world. And number two, by creating your own compost, you don't buy it in those big plastic bags when you go to a garden center. Those plastic bags, almost 90% of them will not decompose. They're not biodegradable. So why would you pay six dollars, ten dollars a bag when you can create it for free in your own backyard? We'll show you how to do that. The second reason why you should compost is it's free It's uh, free food for your soil. Okay, It builds your soil. You don't have to pay for it. Your trash becomes your soil's treasure. Okay, So uh, you get, so I see all these videos uh, and these supplements that you can buy with nitrogen, with potassium, with phosphorus. And sometimes they cost $20, $30 for a little bag. In addition, they're selling trace elements. All of that, the N, the P, the K, and the trace elements can fa be found in basic compost that comes from basic carbon sources, newspaper, uh, cardboard, and your basic um, fruit and vegetable scraps that come out of your kitchen. You don't have to buy anything. It's free. Okay? And the third reason is it's good for you. Composting is good for you. Uh, the whole reason why I started the Executive Garden was to get back closer to nature, to, uh, to de-stress. And composting is kind of the wheel of life, the circle of life. Everything that dies comes back again and helps something that's living, okay? And there's something very um, relaxing to me about that. Number two, it's good for you because you can become self-sufficient. You do not have to rely on the Safeways and the grocery stores of the world that bring in subpar fruit, subpar vegetables that are picked prior to their prime, okay? 
you can be self-sufficient by, by growing your own soil, which grows your own food. And third, and it's obviously uh, probably the most obvious for why it's good for you, is because you grow things organically. You grow healthier foods by having healthier soil, by putting the compost into the soil. And also, you don't use chemicals, okay? You grow organically by allowing your compost and all the positive bacteria and all the positive nutrients that go from that decomposed compost into your material to build the soil to grow great food for you. No chemicals. Uh, purely organic. So that's, that's my three reasons and the sub-reasons why you should compost. So I'm going to show you real quickly uh, my four methods of composting, okay? Um, and I'll walk you around real quick. I'm going to do the pros and cons of each in a later video. Okay, and I'm going to break this up in a series of three or four. And then, um, but the next video is going to be uh, what the compost and the composting basics, okay? Um, so before I end this video, I'm going to show you my four methods of composting, and then uh, I'll prepare part two of the series in a week or two, okay? So I hope this has been helpful. I just wanted to level set this first video, what the series is about. Composting is not intimidating. I'm going to keep it at a very lay person's level because I'm a lay person. And at the end of this series, I want everybody watching this to give composting a try. Try one of the four methods that I talk about. Let me get behind the camera and show you real quickly the four methods I'm using. Okay, the first method, and probably the easiest for most of you, not the least expensive, but the easiest is called a compost tumbler. Okay, real easy. And you can, it's called a tumbler because you can spin it. And the compost, as you can hear, inside this is turning. Okay, as we talked about, it needs uh, air. Um, so by aerating it, by spinning it, uh, it helps it compost faster. So this bin's pretty cool. I'll just show you real quick. You slide it open, there's a compost inside. There's actually two compartments, but uh, we'll talk about later, some carbon source and some nitrogen source. And that is the compost tumbler, okay? Um, let me show you the second method of composting I use. Here it is, the second method I use is the aero bin. This is called a, as opposed to a tumbler, this is a bin, okay? So it sits stationary, uh, it's a bigger deal. I load compost in from the top. Uh, both carbon sources and you'll see both nitrogen and carbon sources in here and um, uh, It's pretty warm in there. It feels about 110 120 degrees in there Which of course you need heat as I talked about the compost you empty it uh, from the bottom Okay, these are detachable compartments as you can see this holds a lot more and uh, This is a called a compost bin. We'll talk about the pros and cons of this in a little bit Or I should say next video Okay, the third method of composting I use is called a compost pile. Anybody can use this if you have a yard. And what I do here is I sandwich both nitrogen sources and carbon sources on top of each other. And I create a compost pile. If you've seen my earlier video, I'll talk about this more later. But I use my uh, rabbit uh, pellets and hay. And I sandwich them in between each other. It gets rained on outside. It's certainly hot enough in Houston at 100 degrees every day. It creates, and certainly it rains all the time, it creates all the necessary elements to compost naturally. So that's the third method called the compost pile. And certainly the fourth method, last but not least, the one that intrigues most of my subscribers, most of my friends, and certainly kids love this too, is called vermicomposting. Worm composting. So these are the two worm ends that I own, both of them. As you'll see, filled to the top with uh, shredded paper and kitchen scraps. Each of them contains thousands of worms. One of them is red wigglers. One is African night crawlers. Uh, and that is a fourth method of composting. So we will go through each of the four that I just described. And you decide at the end of the series which is best for you. Okay, I'll go through pros and cons of each and you decide. So that's the setup for this series on composting. Hope this, uh, at the end of the series, it encourages others to pick one of the four methods and build your soil in your garden, okay? So I hope you've enjoyed this first part. Um, stay tuned the next week or so for part two for composting. Until next time, take care. Bye.